Star Trek Picard is finally here, which means it's time to restart your CBS All Access membership, only to find out that you've never canceled it. God damn it. Naturally, this video has spoilers. As of the making of this video, Season 1, Episode 3 is the latest episode to be released. If spoilers matter to you, then be gone. But before you do, remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and bookmark my live journal page. I write poetry about smells. Given all the backlash over Discovery, Picard felt like CBS's answer to the people who said that Discovery wasn't real Star Trek. Since the debut of Discovery, the debate over what real Star Trek is has been renewed, just like it is whenever any new Star Trek incarnation arrives. But we all know that real Star Trek ended with the official Star Trek cookie manual. It's all been downhill from here, am I right? No. And this 1978 book was compiled by someone named Picard. That's a weird coincidence. If you like Picard and or Discovery, great. It's not my intention to ridicule or sway your opinion. Like most things in life, things are rarely black and white. So I have both positive and negative feelings about the show so far. And it's still very early on. Opinions can change over time, and I hope mine does. Nonetheless, here are my honest feelings about the show so far. Everything's subjective, which naturally means that there are no right or wrong opinions. Unless we're talking about Riker, beard or no beard. We all know the correct answer is, chest hair. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's get to it. Or as Picard would say, And let's begin this with a show of good faith. Let's start off with the positives. Patrick Stewart is in top form. He understands the emotional core of each scene he's in. Whatever the situation calls for, he's on point. He's not just reading lines. The actor Patrick Stewart just melts away and all I see is Jean-Luc Picard. That's a beautiful memory. And it's yours. No one can touch it or take it away. The production design is superb. The locations feel lived in and connected to a living, breathing world. Chateau Picard feels like a place where Picard and his Romulan buddies have spent years of their lives. So far, all the settings feel right and what the story needs them to be. Side note, check out where this shuttle lands, then where it is when we cut to this close-up. Whatever the case, we expect to see Picard approaching from here only he walks up from over here. Yeah, I don't really have a life. What I also like is that Picard isn't surrounded with his Enterprise friends. There are new faces, which feels natural. Life is a series of hellos and goodbyes, and these just happen to be the people in his life at this point. However, they are trying too hard to manufacture history between Rafi and Picard. Might have been nice to hear from you a time or two in there, JL. 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 That's just too much. It would feel forced if Geordi were still hanging around, because he should be out being the captain of the USS Challenger and making cameos on Voyager. Sure, we see Data, but it's in service of the plot, so that works. This guy suggests Picard gather up his old gang to help him on his quest. You need a crew. Riker, Worf, La Forge, hmm? But Picard says he doesn't want to because he doesn't want to put them at risk. They would put themselves at risk out of loyalty to me, and I do not want to have to go through that again. So instead he gets these schmucks to join him, because f*** them. Picard isn't some brooding old man. He's still a recognizable version of Picard who seems to know the right thing to say at any given moment. If you warned me you were a speech maker. I was worried that he'd start the series as some cynical old man who slowly rediscovers himself over the course of the first season. So far, that's not the case. I also like the fan service. Sure, it amounts to nothing more than salivating at the sound of a ringing bell, but I like seeing the ships and other things from TNG. Picard must have salvaged this from the wreck of the Enterprise D. So far, it's not getting in the way of the story, and I don't find it too distracting. Earl Grey never fails. T. Earl Grey. Earl Grey? Never mind. Now there's plenty of negative aspects about the show as well, so let's hit those up. The melodrama. People are crying or in mourning or distraught or angry in nearly every scene. The show tries too hard to elicit some sort of emotional response from me that I just end up feeling numb. The characters also feel like teenagers. They get flirty with each other, they get pouty, or even bizarrely angry out of nowhere. Sheer. Furry. Hubris. This Admiral cusses Picard out when he's trying to inform her of the secret plot against the Federation, but in the very next scene she's telling the Chief of Security to look into Picard's claims. Oh, and I know I'm just being nitpicky here, but she calls him Captain when he was an Admiral at this point. But the great Captain Picard didn't like his orders. This show portrays Picard as a victim. 
He doesn't have to be a victim to participate in the story. Making him feel like a martyr is like a desperate attempt to raise the emotional stakes when there's simply no reason to. The villains are way too villainish. Ow, my foot. Whether it's the Romulan motorcycle gang or the undercover Romulans, with the exception of the movies, Star Trek has never really had villains on the TV show. Sure, there's been antagonists, but the shows were mostly non-judgmental towards them. For the most part, they all had understandable motives. This may change, but for now, these villains are just way too over the top. Another thing is how this show doesn't understand the differentiation between Earth and the Federation. The Federation is comprised of at least 150 civilizations. Earth has a lot of influence within the Federation, but Earth is just one of dozens of planets. If Earth is attacked, the entire Federation isn't going to turn its back on the Romulans. There was a choice between allowing the Federation to implode or letting the Romulans go. Across 150 civilizations, there are probably hundreds of thousands of ships that could still conduct the evacuation. We didn't have enough ships left. We had to make choices. I know all this is done for plot convenience, but it's just a clear example of how the writers don't understand the basic construction of the Star Trek universe. Yeah, I don't really have a life. Overall, my biggest gripe with the show so far is the shoddy storytelling. There's no mystery or intrigue that's keeping me glued. For now, I'm just watching because it has Star Trek in the title. Things are being set up like a mystery, but there isn't any. Picard is seeking Soji, not knowing what to expect, but we've already met her. There's no mystery surrounding Raffi's interest in Free Cloud. Why do you want to go to Free Cloud? We all know it's because of that dank-ass Kush. Hell yeah. There's no mystery behind the villain's plan, because we're straight up told who's behind it. What is there left for the show to do, besides having Picard meet Soji and eventually expose the villains? Granted, I'm making a lot of assumptions about a series that's only three episodes in. The show could blossom into something great, and I might be completely off base. But in today's TV landscape where the competition is so fierce, right now, there's just not a whole lot to keep me in engage. So, those are my initial honest thoughts on the show. Some things are working, others are giving me a bad feeling. But who cares? My opinion is just as meaningless as anyone else's. I'd like to thank these motorcycle gang Romulans for helping support the channel. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video. Go home.